National Championship. The Florida Gators have won the Southeastern Conference Championship. Gator Zone is presented by Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far. Happy 2018, Gator Nation. Before we talk about 2018, got to think about how great 2017 was because there was three national titles, whole bunch of SEC championships, and obviously the hope is we do it once again. We are going to do Gator Zone once again here in 2018. Jeff Cardozo, Gareth Gutierrez here with you, and excited to be back, excited to watch that Florida volleyball team to finish up last year. And even though they fell a little short, still makes me smile thinking about how special that group was. What an absolutely great season. It was really fun to watch. They fell just short in the national championship to Nebraska. But it was a great season, one of the best in program history. So here's a look back at the entire season and the postseason run. This group has embraced challenges all year. I love that we're going to be playing in front of 16,000 Nebraska fans and we're going to have our little section of orange and blue that's going to be cheering us on. That's all we need, to be completely honest. Playing in front of a crowd like this is something that I don't think any single one of us has ever done, and I think we're all looking forward to it. We won this because you came into that match thinking we were going to win. We didn't go down on one. We went up 2 0 we knew we were going to win this match. especially our home crowd and we love getting to show Gator Nation some of the best volleyball and the best volleyball going on in the country right now. So to have that in Gainesville is huge for volleyball um, in Florida and this community. So I think that it was it's really fun for us to show our fans this awesome high level of volleyball and to feel that support from them as well is great. hoopla and build up and everything, at the end of the day, it's us playing a game with a ball and a net. You gotta be like on life support if you don't have a few butterflies today. Would you agree with that? Okay, but we're focused on the things that we need to do. I still maintain at the end of the day, it's a group of people playing the game we've played all our life. The hoopla doesn't matter. Joseph. When she gets on a roll, watch out. Unbelievable performance. 
performance from the sophomore. China Joseph gets the kill. Now let's go get these people. That was a lot of fun to look back on those highlights. It was a great season by the Florida volleyball team, and it was a great way to close out 2017. And speaking of closing out 2017, the student athletes here at the University of Florida closed out 2017 in the giving way. Yeah, they sure did, and uh, they are awesome. We see them on the field all the time, but uh, what you don't see is all the stuff behind the scenes that they do. And a big part of what the student athletes here at the University of Florida do each and every year is gather shoes from throughout the community and they help give them to underprivileged kids. So let's see the story on how that process happens. For the past 16 years, the University Athletic Association and Gator Student Athletes have participated in what is known as Gator Tracks. The program provides shoes and socks for students in seven schools throughout the Alachua County. Coordinated by the Student Athlete Enhancement Program at the Otis Hawkins Center, shoes and socks are purchased using donated money, then wrapped and packaged for delivery by student athletes. So today the student athletes, so like us, we get to come to the schools and get to spend time with the kids and give them um, shoes for Christmas holidays. And it's kind of special to us because a lot of times we see these kids kind of, you know, up in the stands. But it's great because we get to come and spend one-on-one -on -one time with them and also open their shoes and like open up the shoes, put on socks, make sure they fit and kind of like see the joy and like light in their eyes from getting like a Christmas present kind of early. Oh, well, it, it's just been a really fun day because we came in and the kids started coming into the room and you can tell they're all so excited and wondering what is going on and they see the boxes and just to see their faces light up when they see the presents and they just get so excited to open them and watching them open their shoes and try them on, they're all acting like they can jump higher and running around and just seeing their faces makes me so happy. 450 pairs of shoes are delivered during the eight day period, days that are filled with smiles and laughter. At one particular stop, Terra Williger Elementary, Gator Gymnastics were able to deliver some holiday cheer to these young Gators. It's just a great feeling and like doing it, we did it last year and just the experience every year, just seeing the smiles on the kids' face when they open the gifts and see the shoes and they get socks too, it's just heartwarming. Kind of something big because usually we're just doing our sport. So we're kind of like all involved just like in our kind of on the University of Florida campus but like it's good to come to schools and kind of see the kids so it means more to us to give them kind of give back the community and give them shoes. It, it feels amazing just to be able to interact with the community so much because being a student athlete we're so busy on campus so it's great to come out leave campus and just see these kids and be able to bond with our with the team and do stuff together. The Florida Gators making a difference in the community they call home. For Gator Zone, I'm Jake Young. All right, Jake, thank you very much. And you know, I always try to think about myself donating, but I wear a size 14. So not many kids can have that, but I found an 11 year old the other day that wears a 13. Just absolutely nuts. Wow. Well, it's time to get to a break here on Gator Zone, but it's never too early to talk about football. So that's what we have on the other side of the break. Gator Zone is brought to you by Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far. And by Gatorade, win from within. Hey everybody, welcome back to Gator Zone. We've got one of the Pouncey brothers behind us and back when he signed with the University of Florida, a big get for the Florida coaching staff and the recruiting world. And there was a lot of big gets right before Christmas because there's an early signing period now in college football. And he, of course, is still playing in the NFL. So maybe a lot of these guys will have great careers at Florida and be playing in the pros for a long time. I certainly hope we have a couple pounces yeah. on this year's signing team. And it was unique for college football this year to have the early signing day. And it was unique for University of Florida going through the coaching yeah, change. Man. But it was certainly a good early signing day for the Florida Gators. The calendar has flipped to 2018, but the Florida Gator football program already has quite the momentum as they hit the recruiting trail hard and picked up some big time recruits on December 20th for National Signing Day. Let's take a look back at some of the best quotes from head coach Dan Mullen and more. Today's new for everybody. Normally signing day, you know the excitement that comes with it, but here with the early signing uh, period uh, for the first time in football, it's uh, it's going to be an exciting day for us, exciting day for the Gator Nation, and uh, you know, and, and hopefully a very successful day with this uh, the first part of the signing period. Emory Jones, hot topic here right now. What a pickup! Yeah, that was that was big for us. That was big. You know, um, we were the first major program to offer him uh, when I was at Mississippi State several years ago, and uh, you know, it's funny here. Here it comes full circle, all these years later, uh, that he's coming to be a part of our family. 
What separates him from some of these other quarterbacks out there? Obviously a five-star pickup. He's got all the talent in the world, but what really separates him? I think he has great intangibles, um, things that, that you really can't measure in, in terms of it factor, leadership capabilities. You know, that, that type of stuff is important to playing quarterback at this level and, and uh, playing quarterback well at this level. So I'm excited to get him in here uh, and ready to get to work. Talent-wise, what does this kid offer? Well, you know, I mean, the most important thing, he's a winner. You know, I mean, he has, he has some of the, that it quality that you look for that you want in your quarterback. And, you know, I even told him the most important, the most, the most important thing I saw, how, how, how ferociously he plays defense. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it just shows that. You, you can see he can spin it, he can run it, you know, he can throw, he can run. But it's those other qualities to me that are the most important when you're going to be the quarterback, you're going to be the leader of the program. Uh, all of those other things are huge, and you see that he has those things. That's that's what's special. Where else in the country can you be in on three of the top five quarterbacks in the country? You know, the fact that, that Matt Corral and, and, and Justin Fields were considering this, this school and the staff, and then to close with Emory Jones, I mean, I think it just speaks to not only the pull of the University of Florida, but also uh, with what Coach Mullen and, and this group has done to establish themselves as a place that it uh, will put a great offensive uh, scheme together and, and the ability to coach quarterbacks. So I, I think that uh, this was the kind of the, the crown jewel of this class at this point in time. And once you have that quarterback in place, now not only that, that allows you to identify you know, what our, our personality is going to be like as a team, but also now these guys can be early enrollees and start recruiting the rest of that class that will sign in February. You're looking at today for a lot of people preparing for this early signing period uh, where you've had a whole year to kind of prep for this day. We've had three weeks to prep for this day. So, um, you know, I, I think our staff, some of the guys on staff have been, been working their tail off uh, to put it together. And, and the interesting thing is with the early signing period, uh, for us, uh, at, the, at the end of the day today, see where we're at. You reset and basically you're going into another six-week recruiting period uh, for the next signing day in February. The momentum will continue to roll here in Gainesville, Florida as the football squad will hit the recruiting trail once again and get ready for the second recruiting day early in February. For Gator Zone, I'm Mitch Gerber. Well, great stuff there by Mitch and uh, throughout that entire day, and it was a great day for Dan Mullen because it got a whole bunch of players that were really legit. You can throw all those stars out the window now, but uh, they're certainly ready to become a Florida Gators, and there's still another signing period that will happen in early February, but 13 guys got here in December and uh, eight already on campus. We can't wait to see what's in store for those eight guys and everybody else that signs, and we can't wait to see what's in store on more Gator Zones after the break. Gator Zone is brought to you by Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far. And by Gatorade, win from within. Welcome back to Gator Zone. Jeff and Gareth hanging out with you inside the gymnastics practice facility. The perfect 10 wall behind us, yeah. something that we're hoping that Gator Gymnastics will add to this year. And we haven't been in this facility in a while, but that's because it's been a long time since gymnastics has been around and it is back. Yeah, it certainly is. I'm excited to jump around. We'll do that in a little bit, but uh, everybody's jumping for joy that this gymnastics team is uh, getting going again inside Exact Tech Arena because they are going to be good once again. Made it to the Super Six last year, and certainly the sky's the limit for this group once again. Here's Shelby with a preview of what's in store for the gymnastics team. For the sixth consecutive year, the Florida gymnastics team finished among the nation's top four at the 2017 NCAA Championships. Well, the Gators were happy with their third place finish and their 10 All-America honors, they knew there was still room for improvement. Well, now with the nation's top freshman class, depth on every apparatus, and a star-studded senior class, the Gators are ready to put on a show this season. The Gators enter the 2018 season at number two on the National Association of Collegiate Gymnastics Coaches preseason poll. It's a great honor. Uh, it's a great honor coming from coaches around the country who uh, vote on this uh, preseason ranking. And really it just goes to show the hard work that this team has been putting in, you know, day in and day out. The orange and blue lineup will be loaded with talent this season as Florida returns five gymnasts who have earned 21 All-America honors, including seniors Kennedy Baker, Alex McMurtry, and Rachel Slocum. You know, they have such experience and they're so well known here at UF Gymnastics, so for them to lead this team and show us like, you know, the do's and don'ts and still like get, bring the energy and the confidence and the reputation of UF Gymnastics is just, it's a great thing to have in front of us. 
it's been really fun to see them grow uh, as seniors and lead this team in ways that I hadn't seen uh, over the last couple years. They've done a fabulous job and with their experience and their competitive nature, uh, I know they're just going to keep moving forward. The seniors aren't the only ones ready to shine this year for the Gators. Florida's four newcomers make up the top recruiting class in the country, as three of them have had experience with the U.S. National Team program. The freshmen, they really have stepped up the game. They came in the summer and just set the bar really high and really elevated the game. Skills were ready, uh, they were prepared, uh, which made everybody else in turn step up their game as well. The addition of Alyssa Bauman, Jasmine Foberg, Megan Skaggs, and Nicole Webb has given the Gators something they haven't had in a few years, depth. We're going to have the ability this year to play players here and there, um, to rest other players. You know, safety, the health of, of the athletes is um, always my number one priority. But being able to rest and have the ability of these young freshmen compete and get the experience and learn the competition ways of college um, is really important. And we'll be able to play throughout the entire year and see, you know, at the end of the year what uh, our best lineup will look like. The Gators will be tested on the road and in Gainesville this season. They will face nine opponents among the nation's top 20. In the Odom, Florida will host the three other teams making up the preseason top four, Oklahoma, LSU, and Alabama. In my four years at Florida, we've never had such a jam-packed home schedule. Having the first two home meets with the only teams that beat us last year at Nationals, that's incredible, and I'm excited for it. I'm excited to have them in the Odom with 10,000 of our fans. With a talented roster, a competitive schedule, and a won't back down mentality, this Gator squad is one to look out for this season. For Gator Zone, I'm Shelby Gurnan. All right, Shelby, thank you very much. Well, we all know how great the SEC is on, in the gym, on the court, on the field, whatever it might be. The, the SEC is the best of the best, and they're trying to enhance the lives not only during their playing days, but maybe what's in store afterwards. So the SEC took 28 student athletes, and last semester they brought them to your hometown. How cool is that? I love Atlanta, and so did the student athletes. It was an opportunity to visit the Atlanta Braves, Delta, the Boys and Girls Club of America, and Turner, all to see what opportunities they might have after their athletic careers end. Late last fall, 28 current and former SEC student athletes participated in the second annual SEC Career Tour in Atlanta. Track and field senior Nick Arubaru and junior gymnast Amanda Cheney proudly represented the orange and blue. So it was a really great opportunity. They chose one female, one male from each SEC school, and all the kids that were there were so nice and just genuine people that really wanted to like, have a great future and just meet a bunch of people and get as many contacts as possible. So it was really um, good to meet with these higher up people in these big corporate companies and just learn a lot of what they do and learn just like how they got there and what it takes from some of them were student athletes to become like what they are today. So it was a really great experience. The two were included visits to CNN Turner Broadcasting System, Mercedes Benz Corporate, the Atlanta Braves organization, and Delta Airlines. So my favorite was either the Braves or TBS, just because TBS is ultimately what I kind of want to do. But to hear how the Braves um, is such a big company and they really look for, they literally told us like we want to hire student athletes, like that's just a great feeling for us because we know we don't get all the opportunities that normal students do get so that was cool to hear because sometimes we are lacking of in that extra time that we have so um, I really liked the Braves they were very um, easy to react with and just like it was it was a really cool experience. Well the SEC has provided these student athletes the opportunity to compete at the highest level it also provides them with the skills they will need once their athletic career comes to an end. SEC is obviously probably the, the best conference in the nation and it's just a great opportunity that we have to be able to be a part of it and then to have these people who want us to grow and become like great individuals not just athletes because it is going to end in two short years so just to know that they really have our backs and will give us anything any um, opportunities that they think are good or any um, just any advice anything like that it's really cool and to round out the day 
dinner with the SEC commissioner. I actually sat like right across the table from him. He's such a nice guy, so easy to talk to, was really just loved sports and wanted to hear everything that we've been doing this season and just as like the University of Florida as a whole, he wanted to know how our experiences were and if they were good and just like different conversations with him about the new coaching staff that we're having with football and everything, just how campus kind of felt with all the athletes. So he's a really, really cool guy. Gator student athletes getting better every day. For Gator Zone, I'm Shelby Grenath. Thank you very much, Shelby. And it is time for another break here on Gator Zone, but Jeff is getting ready for something that has eluded us here on Gator Zone, the perfect 10. So Jeff with his attempt when we get back. Uh, Jeff, I'm pretty sure the point is to go over the bar a few times. Well, I already did that. I just didn't want to show off on camera, so I'm on the dismount part. Easy as that, here's some more top plays. Today's top plays are brought to you by Nike. Now, what a pass inside to Hudson, but making it fly right there, Cave on Allen. Kulichov puts up a long shot, Allen comes up with it, here his shot is good, and it puts it in right before the buzzer. And now Jalen Hudson, he comes off the bench, he hits a three. Shot by Hudson. Out of the first. To the free throw line, spinning to face is Lorenz in chest pass, right wing, Funda, rhythmic three, got it. Adon inside that hash mark. High low bounce, one of the paint, Lorenzen spins to face, ducks in, banks one up and in with contact. Final 15 seconds of the third. Cersei cross court kick near right, Funda on the angle, a three, buries it. Trigger in, Tigers by seven, 16.6 left. Inbound for Richard Harris, lost the ball. Johnson scoops it up left to right, glides in, floats it up and in. Those were your top plays, and I think we figured out that the bars is not a great event for Jeff, so he's going to try the floor here, see if that is his event. Ooh. I'm not quite sure the floor is his event either. I think you need a little bit more work. Yeah, we do have a lot of time to, uh, to get over here and plenty of stuff to goof around with, and you guys have plenty of ways to follow the Gators. That's right. You can follow the Gators on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. So make sure you get out there and do that. And make sure you start off the year right. Plenty of stuff to talk about here on Gator Zone throughout 2018, but that's going to do it for this episode of Gator Zone. For my partner, Gareth Gutierrez, and the wonderful camera work of Mitch Gerber, I'm Jeff Cardozo. We'll see you guys next time.